Okay. Hello, um, my name is Samar Mahmoud, and I will be presenting my research topic, which is dynamic image crowd representations for improved anomaly detection using generative adversarial networks. Um, I'm a PhD candidate, and my supervisors are Dr. Yasmin Arafa, Professor Cornelia Boldriff, and Professor Jishan Ma from the University of Greenwich. So firstly, I'll explain what my topic is about, then I will explain uh, what crowd anomaly detection is and what the state of the art methods are in this field. I'll then explain what conditional GANs and dynamic images are and how they impact my research. Um, afterwards, I will describe the high density crowd data set I created and I will follow this by the experimentation I did. and lastly, I'll conclude. Okay, um, so crowd uh, formations are inevitable in many environments and an effective way of analyzing crowd behavior and anomaly detection has the potential of making environments smarter and safer. Um, video footage is an important information source and some of which contain crowds of high density. So typical manual surveillance systems present complications concerning both accuracy and computation. And with the use of an automated system to analyze um, crowds, action can be taken when an anomaly or an irregular activity has been detected. Um, the motivation behind my research is surveillance systems aid in the monitoring of crowded venues like malls, airports, sports events, and concerts. Um, and the detection of behavioral changes in these venues can prevent unwanted or even dangerous incidents from occurring. Um, chaotic behaviors are usually triggered by abnormal events such as um, fires, dangerously loud noises, gas leaks, etc. Um, these chaotic behaviors can lead to consequences that are just as threatening as the incident itself. And to manually detect irregular or dangerous incidents is practically impossible, and that's why an automated system is important. The contributions of my research are threefold. I have created a labeled high density crowd data set that contains both normal and abnormal footage. Abnormal meaning footage that contains anomalous behavior. Um, the data set has been applied to the state of the art anomaly detection methods um, just to get a feel of how it works. And it's been made public to other researchers as well. Um, my second contribution is I've applied conditional GANs as a discriminative, discriminative function to distinguish between normal and abnormal behavior within the high density crowd. And my last contribution is I've developed a conditional GAN architecture combined with dynamic images to provide a novel approach for crowd behavior anomaly detection. Going into crowd anomaly detection, the main objective of crowd anomaly detection is to identify non-typical behavior of a crowd, such as vehicles on a footwalk path, um, unusual pattern of people running spontaneously due to some action, um, non-typical overcrowding, or people on vehicle paths jaywalking, for instance. Anomaly detection in crowded scenes is a difficult task, and some of the challenges are uneven lighting conditions. Um, the availability of anomalous event samples or data sets is rare and often subtle. Um, rapid movements of objects weakens the performance of event modeling, and modeling a variety of normal and abnormal events is a difficult task. Lastly, defining normal and abnormal events is vague and dependent on inconsistent visual context. So um, these are some of the state-of-the-art methods I've surveyed. These are their results on different uh, benchmark data sets, um, some of which are handcrafted methods and the others are machine learning methods. And even though the handcrafted methods do not have the best accuracy results, they're methods that are significant to the field and they're still being used as standard comparison methods. Um, handcrafted methods require the extraction of motion or appearance features, such as typical flow estimation and tracklets. 
Um, a dictionary is usually taught to reconstruct normal events with small reconstruction errors, and the features that correspond to abnormal events would have large reconstruction errors. Um, the problem with this method is it requires some priori knowledge to be incorporated during training, and this can be complicated in cases of complex video surveillance scenes. In machine learning, um, some of the supervised and unsupervised methods are convolution, convolution neural networks, tag denoising autoencoders, long short-term memory, etc. Um, with unsupervised methods, they tend to do better than the supervised ones due to the diversity of annotations and the small size of training data. Um, these methods usually incorporate low-level features such as lines, curves, and edges, or high-level uh, features such as objects and shapes. Um, the problem with using just low-level feature detection is it usually causes fragmented and interrupted regions, and it's sensitive to noise and significantly affected by, by environmental changes. Um, another method other than handcrafted and deep learning is a specific one called generative adversarial networks, or um, the more, uh, more detailed uh, conditional um, GANs. The crowd anomaly detection methods that incorporate GANs in their framework have presented accuracy, uh, accuracy results surpass other deep models. Um, basically, conditional GANs are trained to translate between a pair of frames and their corresponding optical flow features. Um, the C GANs are then used to generate either frames or optical flow based on the input. Um, they've been previously incorporated with CNN autoencoders and denoising autoencoders for crowd anomaly detection. Um, previous work uh, have used optical flow motion representations with conditional GANs to detect anomalies within medium density crowds. Um, and through my research, I found that dynamic images prove better than optical flow with respect to accuracy in a field such as action recognition. And therefore, it was hypothesized that the use of dynamic images to train conditional GANs will be better, um, will better the detection of anomalies within medium to high density crowds with respect to both accuracy and performance. Um, dynamic images are basically the temporal representation of a number of consecutive frames. Um, it's calculated using a rank pooling model. The ranking machine encodes the temporal development data extracted from the images, and the ranking classifier uses frame pixels instead of feature representation to achieve. Um, dynamic images have been used for action recognition tests. And another um, version of dynamic images are dynamic optical flow. Um, dynamic images are calculated on the optical flow difference of consecutive frames. Um, you'll see a visualization of both dynamic images on the left and dynamic optical flow on the right. Um, both dynamic images and dynamic optical flow have excelled in action recognition accuracy results in comparison to static images and just plain optical flow. So this is a visualization of the presented framework. There are two stages in, in this framework, the training stage and the testing stage. In the, training, in the training stage, I start with extracting dynamic image representations for all the frames of the training data. And then the denoising autoencoders are trained to extract high level features. Um, and then the conditional GANs are trained to translate between the extracted features and the corresponding frame. In the testing stage in the bottom, um, I extract the dynamic image representations of the testing frames, and then high level features are extracted using the pre trained denoising autoencoder. Um, single level detection maps are calculated using the pre trained CGAN. Then the systematic, uh, semantic sorry, difference is also computed using the pre trained network. Lastly, uh, detection maps are combined to produce a final detection results, which lets me know if there's an anomaly in this frame or not.
This is the data set I've created to overcome some of the deficiencies that benchmark data sets have demonstrated. Um, it's called AHD crowd data set. Um, the deficiencies are one, the density of crowds in the footage are either low or medium. Two, the variability of abnormal behavior is not demonstrated. Um, in the footage, scenes are sometimes acted out or limited to violent behavior. Um, I collected and labeled public footage, which adheres to the constraints I just mentioned. Um, the footage was processed with the following steps. The footage was trimmed and categorized into either normal or abnormal footage based on personal observation. Some of the footage was cropped enough to center focus on the crowds. Um, the footage was then split into frames based on the frame per second rate. Lastly, lossless compression was applied to reduce the size of the data set to an average of 40% less than the original size. Um, so this is just a description of my data set. Um, footage from four events were collected. First is footage from the Times Square chaos after a motorcycle backfired. The footage was taken from three different angles. The second is footage from the Mandalay Bay Hotel of the Las Vegas mass shooting. Um, third is footage from the Love Parade disaster where occurrences of overcrowding, crowd surge and fighting are, record, are recorded. And last is footage from Italy, where Juventus fans panic and rapidly disperse after a bomb scare. The footage is taken from two different angles. Um, this data set was divided into two different data sets. The first is a multi-view high density crowd, which is also a gap regarding data sets. And the second is an abnormal high density crowd data set. Um, these are some sample images from the data set for the different new view. Um, it's been made public on Kaggle, and these are some of the data set statistics taken from Kaggle. It has 166 downloads to this day, and it's also been used by some researchers for tracking tasks. Going into my experimentation. Initially, the evaluation metrics used by most researchers in crowd anomaly detection methods um, to compare their methods against each other are area under curve and equal error rate. As shown in the diagram, area under curve is the area under the ROC curve and the EER is the specific point in the ROC curve. Um, the ROC curve is a plotting of the true positive rate against the false positive rate. Um, to test the AHD crowd data set, several state-of-the-art methods um, for crowd anomaly detection were trained and tested. Um, we have spatio-temporal autoencoder, future frame prediction, and anomaly detection using multi-level representations. All methods were trained and tested on three scenes from the AHD crowd data set, and these are some sample results from one of the scenes. The spatio-temporal autoencoder regularity results right here. Um, the graph on the left shows occurrences where the frames return to a normal state. These are illustrated as red circles. However, according to the ground truth data um, right here on the side, after the hundredth frame right here, the crowd is in a continuous state of abnormal. The future frame prediction results on the bottom left are good. However, in comparison to the achieved results on low to medium density data sets, these results show a significant decline in the, in the performance of the method. And lastly, the anomaly detection using multi-level representation results, um, they demonstrate mediocre performance when testing on high density crowds. Okay. Um, basically, there are three standard ways to constitute the detection of abnormality in a frame. Um, the first is frame level, which requires at least one abnormal pixel for a whole frame to be considered as abnormal. The second is pixel level, where at least 40% of the anomaly ground truth pixels are covered by the detected pixels. And lastly, dual pixel level, which is a bit newer, 
um, where the pixel level constraint, the second one right, uh, the second one is applied, and at least beta percent of the detected pixels are covered by the anomaly ground truth pixels. Um, frame level and pixel level is what is usually the standard, um, usually used by other researchers. Um, as shown in this figure, um, the input frames are given to the, the proposed network and then different motion representations are extracted. And lastly, a final map is obtained and compared to the ground truth data using any of the aforementioned detection constraints, frame level, pixel level, or dual pixel level. The results obtained um, on benchmark data sets like the UCSD data set and the Avenue data set. Um, these are the results I have achieved. Hours, DI, FlowNet, um, DOF using Brox and DOF FlowNet. Um, these are four different types of dynamic image representations I used through um, my network um, just to kind of see which one would work the best. And as you can see, the best results are indicated in bold and the second best results are, uh, are underlined. And these are ordered chronologically. Um, so number 14 and 15 kind of came out after um, I finished my work. Um, so as you can in the framework I presented produces results that are marginally higher than those produced by the state of the art, both on UCSD and the Avenue data sets. Also, um, the framework was used on the AHD crowd data set I created to see how it would work on a high density data set. And these are the results produced. Um, the crowd detection results demonstrate that applying this framework, it performs well on when applied on high density crowds. And you can see the numbers all, all right. Um, yeah, and that's it. So in conclusion, um, a novel approach to crowd anomaly detection utilizing dynamic image representations and CGANs was created. The framework was applied on benchmark, benchmark data sets to evaluate its, its effectiveness compared to the state of the art methods. And the results demonstrated the advantages and disadvantages of in incorporating each motion representation into the proposed framework. Um, the AHD crowd data set was created to evaluate the efficiency of my framework as well as the state of the art methods for detecting anomalies in high density crowds. Um, the results established the necessity for crowd anomaly detection methods to consider high density crowds in their training and testing processes. And that's it. Thank you.